you know. And so it was so special um, to me. And because of time, uh, I'm just going to talk because otherwise um, we'll go a little longer and, you know, you know how that goes. So I just made a deal with Ev that I get to talk tonight. <laughs> so turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 11. Man, uh, I feel like I'm so full of it right now. Um, and I mean that full of the word. Um, just, just so many things going off. You know, I told uh, my friend over in Oklahoma, I said, you ever, you know how it feels when you got an extra clip in your pocket? Anyway, um, I said, I feel like I got an extra one in the, in the pipe or, uh, okay, well, that means I know, I, I, you know how it feels when you, you have a quiver full of arrows when you're going to the woods or you don't get that yet either. You know how it feels when there's just one on the inside or you got so much on the inside, you know you won't get to use it, but you just don't care. It's just nice to have extra ones. Maybe you're like that with dishes or you're like that with something. You, you just like having a couple extra because you just, that's how I feel inside just about messages and messages for me. But I'm like, I don't know who they're for, but they're good. All right. So let me, let's go to Mark chapter 11, uh, uh, Chapter 11, verse, let's start in verse 18, if you will. And it says this, and we're going to read all the way through verse 26, all right? And uh, da, 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 let's put, put it up there because I didn't copy and paste uh, all the way from 18 uh, in KJV, if you will. Oh, you're awesome. Look at that. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's go down. To, um, let's keep going. Let's go maybe 20, see where 20 is at because uh, I didn't have it on my notes. Uh, yeah, okay, let's just pick up here. This is the story of the fig tree. You might know, be familiar with Mark 11, 23, and 24. But I just wanted to set up this whole, this whole passage here um, and, and take a look at what God's saying to us, all right? And so Mark 11, 20, it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said unto him, Rabbi, or teacher, and I love this picture here because this puts Jesus in the place and puts them as students at this moment. Teacher, rabbi, rabbi, and, and they would call him that, um, but I love that, that, he, that it's just kind of outlines that here. It says teacher, like, hey, look, Jesus, look, teacher, uh, the fig tree, which you have cursed, has withered away. I love this because when you call somebody a teacher, uh, that would make, not only make you a student, but it, it's almost like it makes a demand on the gift. It's kind of like uh, something that uh, was told me uh, uh, a, while, a while ago by Pastor Susan. Um, in my house, um, we call, uh, when I went to church uh, uh, at Mack and Lynn Hammond's church, okay, that's their names. And so at my house, uh, we'd always, my mom would say, oh, Mac did good today, oh, Mac. Okay, Lynn, this is how they talked about him. It was Mac. Oh, did you talk? Oh, you got to sit by Mac? Okay. And then, uh, oh, yeah, Lynn was there and, and da, 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 da. And this was a big church, you know. Uh, and, and I always held them in very high esteem. But um, I remember being at Pastor Susan's house, and I was a young man. And uh, I said, yeah, I saw Mac today uh, in his car. And she goes, what? And I said, well, you know, Mac, you know, uh, pastor at church. And she goes, yeah, Pastor Mac. And I was like, yeah. And she made this, made this, this point to me that if, when, just by simply not acknowledging the office or that which he carries from what, and again, if you're going to that place, you are saying that this is who God is put in the place in the body and put you and drew you here. And so what you have is there, it's for you. But, but you acknowledging that gift or that office, it positions not only you, but it also makes a demand on him from heaven. Wow. Could it really be that simple? Yeah. You make a demand on what you call somebody. Right? I was like, whoa. So here you see this piece, and in these next few verses, he lays out some stuff about this tree or about mountains or about uh, things in our lives that happen. And he doesn't say, well, I'm Jesus, you idiots, you can't do it. Maybe one day you'll arrive there and you'll be able to talk to a tree too. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. The, the demand and, and the acknowledgement not only puts the, 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 these disciples as and Peter, and I love Peter, he's he always learning, because we know when you're, t okay, <laughs> always, you know, always putting himself in very teachable moments, thank God, but walking on water, 
Like, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and very bold. Just so much about Peter I love. I, people say, who would you like to meet? I'd like to meet Peter. Because the, he, there was somebody that was bold. And somebody that wasn't, a, uh, wasn't afraid of looking foolish. You know, and how, how much God loved him. There had to be something that he under, understood or didn't understand. And sometimes I think that's our strength is how much we don't understand even when we think we know. But here he goes and he says, teacher. And so Jesus answered and said unto them, Here's go. All right, guys, I'm about to teach you. He says, have faith in God. Now, I want to talk really tonight. I feel like the Lord is highlighting um, how valuable you are, but how valuable people are. Okay? And let's, let's just stick with me here. Have faith in God. Not have faith in your faith, but have faith in God. Not have faith in your confession. Not have faith in your words. Those are important. Okay? But that's not what you have faith in. Okay, have faith in him. Let's keep on going. For, for, for assuredly I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, um, whatever things you ask when you pray, and I would maybe just even stop, or, oh, there's so much I, I could talk in here, but what are you asking for right now? I love uh, even tonight the, uh, are you come expecting? And it's like, yeah, because I'm in church. That's what we do. Because it says it above the door, your expectation is an invitation for God to move. Yeah. Okay, what are you expecting? Yeah, I'm expecting. What are you expecting? Well, you know, just God. You know, just, well, that's not expecting. God's going to be God, but what are you expecting? What have you asked for? What are you currently asking for? What are you asking for right now that you can't do? That requires what? Faith in God. Because this is what he's talking about, having faith in God. Not having faith in your faith, not having faith in your ability, not having faith in your checkbook or in your words, but having faith in him. What is it right now that I'm expecting or that I'm asking in prayer that's bigger than me? Yeah. And I'm talking about relations, how, God, how much God loves people. He needs the sh- not only you to experience his goodness and experience what you're asking for, and, and he needs you, to, you and I to start asking for more things. Okay, not just things. I'm talking about people, too. You know, I talk to you about God all the time, but, do, but I need to be talking to God about you. You understand? And, and, and asking, Lord, for salvation, asking, Lord, for goodness of God in their life, and asking God for things in their family, and asking God, and asking God the only things he can do, asking God for restoration, asking God for healing, asking God for peace, asking God whatever you do, whenever, whenever you pray, is what he says, and whatever you, uh, uh, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, he says, believe that you would receive them, uh, because you prayed and you were good that week, uh, and you will have, no, it doesn't say anything to that. It says have faith in God. But believe you receive them, and you shall have them. And I want to keep on going here. Let's, I guess I could do that without telling you that. And whenever you stand praying, if you have, I love this, if you have anything against anyone, in order to have anything against anyone, you have to count it. <laughs> in order to have anything against anyone, you have to count it. He's speaking of love right here. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that, that, um, that love, he says, love is patient, love is kind. Love, it, it says it doesn't count a suffered wrong. It believes the best, hopes, all these kind of things, right? But I just really want to hit on that. It doesn't count a suffered wrong. One, two, three. You know, ought is simply because you've thought too long about what they're not. That's how ought gets in your heart. Just thinking about all that they're not. Not this. Not that. Maybe your kids. I got kids. I got kids. I got I got friends. I got family. I got great friends. I got friends that that maybe have done something that that maybe causes you to think about what they're not. Oh, and you start thinking on that, and all of a sudden you start thinking about what they're not. Then the next response of what you see is what they're not, and what they're not, and what they're not. And you begin to count. And here's what he says: whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone. That also includes yourself. It doesn't just say any, anyone includes you. So if you've been counting against yourself, like let's say I told you today how much God loves you and, 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 and that he thinks you're just incredible. You're an amazing man. You're an amazing woman. You're an amazing child of God. You are just, and you're like, yeah, no, no, no. 
because you've been counting. You've been counting how many times you failed. You've been counting how many times you talked back or talked rudely to somebody or how many times you did the thing you wouldn't say. You, you count. We, we, when we count, ought begins to come in the way. And so he says, whenever you, uh, he's saying, if you have ought against anyone, he says, uh, forgive them. Forgive them. This is love. This takes the love of God. Okay? So for the, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. And he goes on to say, but if you do not forgive them, neither your Father in heaven will he forgive your trespasses. Um, and so I think this is really, really, really powerful because what, what we're seeing here is that, that you haven't really received the love of God if you can't give the love of God. And, and, and even the prayers that you're supposed to be praying that are supposed to move mountains won't work because you're gonna, they're going to be based upon your works, your confession, your words more than they're going to be faith, based upon your faith in Him. And I don't know how to, maybe I'm going to say this again five is six different ways to try to get across this point, that unless I understand how much He loves me and how good He has been to me and know His love, um, even unless I know that, um, in this world, uh, when he does something for me, there's a lot of what's holding up. There's a lot of mountains that are held in our way, though we're saying the right things, doing the right things, and, and, and all this stuff, but our faith is in those things and not in him, and therefore in ourself and in our own uh, earning of something. And if it was to move and if it was to go, it would produce pride. Oh. There are a lot of mountains. You said the right words. You did the right things. But your faith has been in, uh, in performance, in what you've been doing or not been doing, et cetera, et cetera. And you're holding other. Here's how, you, here's how you can know real quick. Because you've been holding other people by the same standard, their performance. And he said that I can't. Uh, oh, Lord, help me to explain this. Uh, he wants so bad for you to operate in the love that he has for you towards others. And that's evidence as you give it out that, that it's fruit in your life that you also have received it. And that everything that comes from him, everything that be, when your heart uh, prays and your heart desires something because your faith is in him and it's done, you recognize that it was him and he gets the glory and you don't fall because of pride and get exalted because we know that the love of God doesn't want you and I to fall. He watched this happen to Lucifer in heaven. He saw what, in a sense, things are, you would say, he's holding that from me. No, he's so good. He's so good that, that he wants you to know how much he loves you so he can, he can do it for you and he can do it with you and you can extend that same love towards others because he is all about relationships and connections and I'm holding things I'm counting things that other people are doing and, and the, just the fact that I'm counting when I'm standing there let me tell you it's so deceptive and so easy to weasel in and I'm not saying be afraid I'm just saying understand God loves you We, and we're in this world and we're so pressed on every side to, to, to earn a paycheck. There's things you got to earn, but let me tell you, you cannot earn the love of God. And no, no one else can either. And the love of God that's on the inside of you, nobody can earn it. And as long as I count what somebody's not, What's going to happen is the love of God that is supposed to be operating. Now, faith works by what? Love. It's like having this huge gift that God's given me, but just leaving the keys or, or, or a power tool, but not plugging it in because of what I'm holding against others. I'm counting things. God's the greatest restorer. And so much of our lives, and I just feel like, uh, and I know that God's taking these things and, and, and hitting just the people that need to hear it. Maybe I'm just one of them again. I think of painting. I used to have a pay a painting contractor, and, and I'd have a, my paint gun, and, uh, and, and occasionally um, I would put the rig or the gun in lacquer thinner. 
And you know, there were certain parts of the gun that were always in my hand, and they, were always, they stayed shiny because they never got covered in paint. And you know what's interesting about that? They really didn't need cleaned. But there was other parts of the gun that would really, really, really benefit from soaking. And some would a quick soak and it was ready. But others took a little longer soak. I think sometimes we, even, even when we hear, uh, we sit and, and, and hear the word, we don't pull as hard because we're clean. But yet the gun, if that tip, if, that, if, the, if the orifice, if the, the place it doesn't get all the way clean, guess what? That gun is kind of useless. So the, 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 every, the whole piece of that gun, uh, the whole piece of that spray gun uh, really benefits when all of it sits in it. And the love of God. He loves us so much. And I was thinking, uh, you ever had a response that you don't like come out of you? Maybe I'm the only guy. Like, just like, <laughs> like, I'm like walking the fruits of the Spirit really well by myself. <laughs> you know, I do it great. I'm so patient. Like, so patient. Um, but you put other people in the mix, and th- sometimes, okay, not, not always, I, but there's times that your response is not, does not match your, your choice, right? Your choice. In other words, what you would want to do. Like, I would pick this, but somehow I end up doing this, right? Like, I really would rather have just said no, and said I was like, no, you know, or whatever. Hey, can you come over here and help me? Get over here and help me. What are you doing, you lazy bum, right? Or whatever, I don't know. Um, but so many times, uh, our, our choice, and what the, uh, man, we, we're not, we're, we're not, we find ourselves not doing what we would like to do. And here's what I would say. A lot of times, and this just has to do with relationships. This maybe has simply to do with simply relationships. When I count, um, something that somebody did not do or did do, Right? Like that they did to me, and or you could put that. You could really put them, depending on how you word it, what they didn't do. You could put everything in what they didn't do. They didn't open the door. They they didn't use kind words. They used rude words. So they didn't. You could put everything. But when I count those things, what happens is it's kind of like this 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 word or this saying you've heard. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. You ever heard that? Anybody? Okay. It wasn't the straw that broke the camel's back. The straw didn't break. It was all that was packed. That straw was just nothing. It was all that they were already carrying. And so many times in our lives, uh, our relationships um, don't experience all that God desired because of all the things that we got packed right here, that we've been carrying them around. We've been counting them. And so it, you put yourself in that same, same situation. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it, they could do anything and boom, that quick. You're in a response that you don't like. Or you don't want, or that, and it's great because not only does it bring co- co- uh, condemnation to you, but it brings separation in the things that God joined. There's got to have to be a little bit greater faith in our in our um, in our faith in God, okay, in how He orders the steps of the righteous man, and how He knew you before you were born, and He sets you in this place, in this stage, or you know, in this in this season, if you will, of life with these people. That's, there's God, God's a pretty handy guy. He knows when to set you and where to put you and that, that you'd be hanging out together. And, and, and when, there, when there's ought or when there's dis, uh, strife, you got to understand where there's strife and discord, there's every evil work. So if there's strife in a relationship, if there's strife in a family, if there's strife in a home, that's from the devil. And he's working extra hard for something. What? And that's division because he sees something there. He, he's not, he's a worthy, he, he's a worthy, he sees something there that could be great. And I was even talking to a couple kids at camp this week uh, about being born and how God chose you. And sometimes we struggle in saying, if God chose me and he knew I'd be here, um, why did he put me, and I, I probably shouldn't have used these words, but I did, in such a hell hole? Because this is their, this is what they know. This is what they experience. And, the, and if you were to look at their lives and sit in some of the things that they're sitting in, you might would maybe use even more uh, dis- descriptive language. 
as you sit and listen to what, they, what they're going through. And maybe how they, they don't live in a house, they live in a car. Or, or how, uh, you know, mom doesn't love me or dad doesn't love me. My mom walked out on me and left me with an abusive, uh, uh, abusive father that's been sexually, not, not this is not, but has sexually abused my family. And where's God in that? You know, so it's tough sometimes to, to reason these things. But here's the, what the Bible says. Where, how many of you believe that um, grace is a gift? I'm, I'm wrapping up right here. I'm done. Um, grace is a gift. Okay? The Bible says where, where sin abounds, something else abounds more. So, where God sets you, he equips you with grace that's incredibly great to handle that place and that season. God does. This is why, and, and he knows that. He knows how good, Satan knows how good God is. He knows how, how good he is and that he would never put somebody in a place without, without the grace to overcome and to bring what he desires there. The grace is there. And this is why the enemy at a very young age and these kind of thi- uh, 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 in the places works extra hard for kids and, and people and those families and those circumstances that have, you would say it's been in a generational curse. They're not in a generational curse. Let me tell you, there's a bunch of choices that need extra grace to break. And so he puts one there and he says, oh no, I'm not going to let you, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to write a story about them and where you can't be. And what, and so to where you now, you, you, you become the elephant staked with a little rope. Yeah, everything what's been given to you and the grace to overcome and to not only overcome you as an individual, but to change those that are around you, to bring heaven here on earth. It's on the inside of you. It's given to you. Your family, if, if, you, if you're the only one in your family, if you're the only one, if you're the kids, let me tell you, there's grace for that. There's grace for that space. There's grace for that place. There's grace for that season. And we'll access that if we stop counting all the things that we've suffered wrong. If you have ought against any, it could be ought against your mom, and it could be ought against your dad, it could be ought against yourself, it could be ought against him. But when you understand how much he loves you, what happens is all of a sudden, uh, 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 and I know those that maybe don't tie together as far as what I talked about at the end, but I, what I was talking about at the beginning, your and my prayers will begin to be seen uh, here on this earth. In other words, that, that, that uh, there would be great uh, impact and we would, we would walk in them and we go, God, wow. And people would say, who are you that, that God loves so much? You say, he just loves me. And you know what? He loves you. And, and the only reason they came to you is because they thought that they could. Why? Because they saw something on you like the smile you just saw, like you'd been with Jesus. I know I just gave you a whole mouthful in a short amount of time, but God wants you and I to have faith in him more than our faith. And, and let me tell you, your confession, I love what E.W. Kenyon says, your uh, confession builds the road over which faith carries its mighty cargo, your, which is the promise, faith. You just trust in God's promise, but you, you saying, and you know what I found? You, you say what you believe. You say what you believe. And so many times, even when we count the ought, we are the actually, we are responsible for keeping people bound because we talk about their shortcomings. If words create, you ever, ha- you ever believe something about yourself? It's called a stronghold. You know what that is? They're made out of what those strongholds are made out of? Words. But the love of God. The love of God, and, and, and even this just, um, and I was just talking from heart, I didn't roll through any notes, you know. And, um, so many times, and this, when I was about to come up here, um, the Lord was just talking to me just in, in my heart about uh, sell, address affection before correction. I know that I talk in rhymes all the time because I do it, you know. I'm a poet, I don't even know it, you know. All right. But seriously, uh, if we would, with our kids, talk about our affection and how much we love for them before we do correction. 
what would happen is <laughs> we would be doing a lot less correcting. See, it's the love of God that leads us to think the way he thinks. To think that, that's, what, that's what repentance, to change the way we think. It's the love of God. And I'll tell you, our love for other people, oh my gosh, it'll, it'll, it, they'll see God, and so will we. And it'll change a lot of how we think. It'll change a lot of how we thought. It'll change a lot of, about what we've been doing and thinking we're, our doing is going to get us something and earn something with God instead of just putting our faith in God and standing there praying and asking for some things because we believe in his love for us. Listen, he loves us so much that he could love me. He could find me. He can find them. Listen, he can find you. He can find, he can do that. He can do this. He can do that. Just, I just believe God's wanting to show off his love towards us. Like never before, just that we would be so amazed at his goodness. We've heard and we've sang, uh, Jesus love, or, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, but do I really know it? Father, show us. Like we've never seen before. Let us trust in you. Let us trust in you for our kids because he loves me. Because he loves me. Because he loves me. That's why. Because he loves me. We should bow our heads. Father, thank you for your love. You said if any, uh, whenever we stand praying, that we would just simply believe what we ask. Father, I ask right now for you just to pour out and pour into our hearts tonight. In our days, in our hours that are ahead, pour out your love. Father, just like you've been doing with me lately undeserving, unearning, just good. Father, thank you for your goodness, your glory. Thank you for your goodness passing before us and, and walking with us and, and restoring. Thank you for your goodness restoring. Restoring relationships. Restoring our minds and the way that we think. Restoring our approach to be as you, to just to see from our heart that has the lens of love. Father, thank you. Thank you for doing that for us tonight. Thank you for doing that for these people tonight. That just love would so, your love would so saturate them. that our responses would be uncharacteristic of self, but simply of you. That it would be said of us just as Jesus said, that, that, that as when you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because, Father, that we've seen you. Like never before, I just asked that unordinary love unordinary love and just if there's if there's been aught if we've been counting offenses and frustrations towards others just tonight right now while we stand here praying we forgive I fight for my choice when I use my voice. And so I say with my mouth, I forgive them. And we just thank you for it. I thank you for that work that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to dismiss you here in just, just, just a moment. But when I uh, was finishing up praying there, um, it would be good for you if you have been struggling with ought or frustration towards anyone, towards any situation, for you to unpack that like you would a moving truck with your voice. And so get that big box that says master bedroom or kitchen and get that one out, that one that's really hurt you, you know, and just say, Lord, I forgive them for talking bad about me. Just unpack your heart so that God's word can fit. 
unpack it. Father, I, th- I forgive that person and forgive it. For, look within. Holy, the ho- Holy Spirit will tell you. Ho- the Holy Spirit will show you exactly what's, what's in there and what keeps on you keep on stumbling. What, what keeps the straw that break in the camel's back? No, it's all that's been packed. He'll show you and you'll get it out. But use your voice because you fight for your choice when you use your voice. You can't just think it. You use your voice. And you, you, the same thing that's words, you take those words with your mouth, and you, which is the release of your will, and you pull that out in the name of Jesus. And every time it comes in, and, and when you take out the refrigerator box, and when you take out the, and they decide to put the whole entertainment center right back in, <laughs> even if your response is wrong, okay, I just take that <laughs> entertainment center out. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, I just forgive them. Father, I forgive them for that. And I forgive them for that. And I forgive them for that. And you'll find that that truck will let be empty. Your heart will be empty. But it will be filled because it will be filled with the love of God. Amen. I believe that received. Uh, we'll see you guys Sunday morning. Pastor Kevin and Susan are actually uh, going to be in the house. And they're going to be doing uh, this Sunday. And then I'm going to also be giving uh, just a short hill update. Um, maybe you saw half the earth moved out on the hill uh, out here. It's exciting. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, even just getting some fill dirt, um, we went dig deeper. If you're going to build a pond, it was the worst case scenario. If you're going to build a hill, it was the best case scenario because we were able to get certain material for all of our fill on site, um, huge money savings, uh, and the material that was there for the pond was on top. Uh, and just by pushing it out of the way, we got to all this amazing material um, and that's what all that is. It's going to the roadways and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, exciting stuff. So God bless you. Uh, thanks for coming tonight.